Good evening, and, and on behalf of the Social Studies Department and American Government classes at West Chicago Community High School, I welcome you to our District 94 School Board Candidate Forum. I'm Luciana Balzer, a senior at West Chicago Community High School and your moderator tonight. These are our American Government students with me here tonight who will be asking questions. And <laughs> Tonight's forum is for candidates running for West Chicago Community High School District 94 School Board. We thank you for participating in tonight's forum and for running for local public office. Each of you agreed to basic rules based on guidelines for the League of Women Voters to promote civil discourse and respect for all candidates. The basic guidelines are as follows. Candidates, candidates should mute themselves when it is not their turn to speak. Candidates will give opening statements in alphabetical order by last name. Candidates will alternate in the order of speaking, and the candidates who make the first opening statement will move to the end of the line for the next question. And this will continue throughout the questioning process. Candidates will also will each be allowed one minute to make an opening statement, one minute to answer the question, and one minute to make a closing statement. If candidates exceed a lot of time, I will ask you to finish your sentence and then we will move on to the next candidate. Candidate statements and responses will be timed. And our American government student, um, Ms. Katie Janice, she will be keeping time and display count cards visible to the candidates on the moderator. So try to keep an eye on Katie Janice's screen. And when she shows the yellow card, you have 15 seconds left and a red means time's up. <clears throat> Audience questions were obtained in advance and I will read each question aloud and it will be typed in the chat for your reference as well. Um, no visual aids will be permitted and this forum is being recorded and will be available on the League of Women Voters website and social media. So before we begin our opening statements, are there any questions? Okay. I just, I just got in, can you hear me, Rich Nagel? Yes. Okay, you. good. I apologize for getting in late. I got tied up. No problem. Okay. We will begin with opening statements. As we will proceed with alphabetical order, uh, Ms. Ceramus, you will be the first candidate to share your opening statement. You will have one minute for your opening statement and you will, yeah, okay. Are you ready? Okay, you're going to need to unmute before you start. Okay. Um, you good, after good afternoon. Thank you to students, staff, and League of Women Voters for inviting us to participate in this forum. My name is Catherine Doremus. I've been a resident of Winfield for 28 years and have three children and a daughter-in-law who have all graduated from West Chicago Community High School. I have previously served three terms on the school board and was recently appointed last October to join the board again when an opening became available. Uh, I had to do some serious thinking about joining the board at that time in the middle of a pandemic and decided to do that because I thought the skill set and experience I had had for my previous 12 years would be beneficial for the students and the school as a whole and help make decisions as we went, go, went going forward in an unprecedented situation. With that, I'm looking forward to another term on the board and hoping to be able to bring that experience to the table to get past the pandemic and move forward to bring our students back into the school fully and be able to get back to the goals and the learning opportunities that are needed for all of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now move on to Mr. Clay Patch. No, okay. Uh, next person is Ms. Munoz. Hi everyone, as Ms. Dorema said, thank you so much for having uh, me here today. Uh, I am a lifelong community member, passionate about West Chicago, passionate about community high school. 
schools, students, and families. I definitely want to be that voice reflective of the diversity here in West Chicago. I have a son who graduated um, high school two years ago. I have a daughter who's a junior and a third in third grade at the elementary school. I have worked in both districts. I am currently a family liaison at Pioneer Elementary School. And I look forward to uh, connecting uh, back with my community at D94. I'm excited and passionate to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. Oh, I need you to unmute and then you can start over. I thought I had, okay, how's that? Can you hear me? Good. Yep. Okay. Um, my name is Rich Nagel. I'm running for my eighth term on the board. I've been on the board for 28 years and I estimate I've probably seen 14,000 students go across the stage. My favorite part of being on the board is watching the graduation and, and seeing everybody uh, that's accomplished all the great things they've been able to do. Um, I've, had, uh, I've been in town for 44 years. I have three kids that went through the high school and uh, very proud of uh, the education they had gotten and uh, what they've become as uh, young adults, uh, fulfilling the mission uh, that we've had. So I'm looking for, uh, forward to another term and uh, trying to get us recovered from the pandemic and all the issues that it's left us and uh, making sure that our students get the, the best opportunities that they possibly can. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zuniga. So thank you so much for having me. Um, so my name is Giovanni Zuniga. I am also a lifelong member of the community. I was born and raised in West Chicago. I attended all local schools from the preschool, went to Courier Lehman, and I also went through D94. Uh, then I went off to get my bachelor's and master's and then came back. I, I mean, I love this community. I love the community that my family loves the community, you know, what it represents. Um, and so I am also now a teacher at Lehman, Lehman Middle School. Uh, I'm running for the board because much like, like uh, Ms. Munoz said, um, I think the board serves a very diver diverse student population. Uh, and I think that the board should reflect that. Um, you know, my priorities is, you know, when, is, you know, getting students back, you know, and, and giving them those educational opportunities, those credit recoveries, because I mean, this year has been really rough for, for all students. Um, but yeah, again, thank you for, you know, for having me. Um, and I want to also bridge that uh, bridge the community a little bit more um, and uh, help out all the students succeed, and especially with increasing non-traditional career paths to help all students succeed, you know, especially post high school and uh, continue to promote academic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nagel. Again, thank you for having me. Um, I have 26 years in education I'm currently uh, the librarian at Courier Elementary School um, in District 33. Um, I've taught elementary school, middle school, and I also currently teach part-time at Fenton High School. Um, so I've worked with a variety of age groups. Um, uh, I don't have kids of my own. I have 10 nieces and nephews, but I also have thousands of kids who I can call mine since I've taught them um, <laughs> from kindergarten through high school age. Um, and I look forward to the opportunity to um, develop a community where everyone has uh, some input into what happens at the school, um, including students, parents, administrators, teachers, and of course the board um, representing the taxpayers and the community itself. Um, my three main goals um, that I see are inclusion for all students and all staff and all administration and all parents. Um, college and career readiness, whether that means um, non-traditional career choices, armed forces, um, trades, um, or, or college, university. 
Um, and last, and certainly not least, safety. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sake. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you to League of Women Voters and the American Government students for hosting the forum today. Uh, my name is Gary Sake, and I'm a 12 year incumbent seeking re election. My wife, Ada, and I have uh, lived in unincorporated Winfield for 22 years, and I grew up in DuPage County. Outside of my time on the board, I'm vice president and co owner of a financial technologies firm and chairman of board of DuPage Credit Union. Uh, public service has always been an important part of my life, uh, having previously served as a part-time firefighter on the board of a statewide vocational education organization as a member of other service and philanthropic uh, organizations. I'm running for re-election because I'm just incredibly proud of how far the district has come during my tenure and my contributions to those successes. Uh, we've made great strides in programs, facilities, transparency, and fiscal stability, and I really look forward to continuing to drive that progress for the betterment of all students in the district. Thank you. Thank you all for your opening statement. We will now move on to the question portion of the forum. These questions were submitted by members of the community and also by the students in the American government classes. Question one um, will be, Ms. Munoz, you will start. Um, you guys ready? Hello, candidates. My name is Marco Esteban. I'm a senior and football player for West Chicago Community High School. And my question for today is, why, why are you qualified to be in this position? And what are some of your personal qualities that demonstrate it? Start off with uh, you, Mrs. Munoz. Thank you for that question, Marco. I think that I'm a great listener and I I've had um, firsthand experience with working with the students and families of um, Community High School District 94. Uh, I think that we have a great community. I think we have a lot of um, great families here and students here looking to just develop more of a stronger connection to their high school. Um, I'm definitely a a product of this high school. So that also makes me very connected. I'm a current parent. And I think that also gives me kind of an edge on, you know, the, the, the difficulties that students have experienced, especially during 2020. It's been a very challenging year. I think that um, as a parent and as a community member and also somebody close to um, the school district, I know firsthand that there's a lot of needs for resources, there's a lot of need for support, but more than anything, we need to build more of that one-on-one -on -one connection in order for our students and families to develop a connectivity and continuity to their school district. Mr. Nagel. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, why am I qualified? I think I'm, uh, my experience, my 28 years, uh, and the condition that the district is in shows some qualifications that uh, I am able to keep track of what's going on, make good decisions, help the district move forward. Uh, my personal qualities, uh, I'm an engineer. I tend to be uh, able to make uh, good decisions based on asking good questions, uh, do some analysis. I tend to not jump to conclusions, uh, but think about things. We usually have good discussions at the board table. And uh, I think my, my background and experience, I'm, I'm kind of the district historian at this point. Uh, so I, I have a lot of background and, and knowledge of uh, the past 28 years. Thank you. Mr. Orlick. As I mentioned previously, I have um, 26 years of experience as an educator um, at all grade levels, including high school. Um, and I've served on a number of leadership committees throughout my career in various schools. Um, and one thing that I hear consistently from uh, my principals is that I'm a good idea person. Um, I'm creative, um, I'm a problem solver, uh, and I look at ways that we can address issues uh, in the way that's going to serve everybody's best interests. 
Um, I've served on negotiation teams um, as an educator um, in the past. And so I kind of understand uh, that process. Um, and I've also been a public librarian, which um, I've served on uh, leadership committees during my tenure as librarian as well. So I look forward to the opportunity to work with um, some of the members of this board um, looking towards the future and doing what's best for the students. Thank you. Uh, I, like Rich, I think one of the things that I bring is the experience. Uh, 12 years on the board uh, and four years as treasurer of the district uh, certainly gave me a uh, leg up in understanding uh, the unique issues that, uh, the, that the district has to deal with financially and uh, knowing how all the money moves, the sources of it, the interrelationships of it, uh, certainly uh, really, I think, an important aspect uh, of a board member serving uh, everything that we do. Uh, not that it, not that it's, that money is the most important thing, but it is the thing that drives so much of what we do. Uh, I do have a background in finance. I have a background in technology. Uh, obviously, uh, as we, the, the needs of the uh, community are, are foremost in my mind. I have very close ties to uh, other organizations in town. Uh, and the other units of government, which I think is also important to, to form that, uh, to, to make that, uh, to make that work with, uh, make us uh, work with other groups. Thank you. Mr. Zuniga. So great question. Um, so let's say as a former, you know, again, I, I grew up in West Chicago. I went through the complete school system. I went to the same high school. I've experienced the good and sometimes the bad. You know that happens in, in the high school and um, I have that student perspective and now as an educator I have the educator perspective of you know the notion of you know serving the students of giving the best options to students and as you know as an educator you know there is no one way you know nothing works for everyone so having that open-mindedness and uh, that follow up with your other question so Matt some attributes I think I have pretty open-minded uh, and uh, I feel like I'm a good listener uh, and some compassion as well. I think this year as an educator, it's really opened the doors for being more compassionate and understanding that, you know, you have the kids in front of you, but they have a whole lot of stuff going on at home. And so understanding that and being able to connect with the students and you just giving the best option for the students to promote that success and help that student. Um, and so that's what I would say would make me qualified for the position. Thank you. And lastly, Mrs. Doremus. Like Mr. Nagel and Mr. Sake, the 12 years experience on the board um, gives me a lot of qualifications along with as they have participating in so many of the trainings that are offered to school board members in so many different areas. And I think all three of us through the year, through our tenure on the board have gone, attended the programs that are available. So we have a lot of knowledge and understanding of how ed educational systems work and the challenges confronting schools. I also have been involved in education and have a tremendous passion for kids since I was in college teaching English as a second language. I have family members who are uh, grew up in the diverse community of West Chicago and have met with the challenges of being non-English speaking. And I've been involved in community groups such as We Go Together for Kids through all of my tenure in this area. So I think I bring a lot of experience, knowledge and ability to work together for the benefit of all students. Thanks. Okay, so we'll now move on to question two. And Mr. Nagel, you will begin that question. Um, hello, my name is Edith Luna. I am the Vice President of the National Honor Society. Um, my question is, what motivated you to run for office and what can we expect from you as a board member? Um, Mr. Nagel, can you start us off, please? Sure. Sure, I'm... Oh, what's going on here? I 
can't find my unmute button. There you go. Um, what motivates me, uh, it, it, it's the same thing that's motivated me for every uh, time I've run. I feel that people need to give back to the community. Um, I find that being in education, being uh, able to provide the good opportunities for our students is, is one of the most important things that anybody could do. Um, my motivation uh, is to be able to provide my time and efforts and uh, abilities to uh, be able to provide for the students of the community, um, work with the administration, work with the staff, work with the parents in the community to bring the best opportunities to the school. What was the second part of the question? What, what can you expect from me? Um, I think you can expect honesty, fairness, transparency. Um, one thing I, I tend to do is I, I ask tough questions and I tend to challenge the administration. Uh, we don't want to just be a rubber stamp board. We want to make sure that the administration is That's going in the direction we want them to go. And, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next person, Mr. Orlick. Um, one of the things that motivated me was that both of my parents were very active in our community. Growing up, I went through the Bensonville School District, which um, is a very similar school district now to West Chicago. Um, my dad was a school board member. My mom was PTA president. Um, and I learned from them the values of being a part of the educational community. So, um, I'm interested to look at it now as a resident of West Chicago rather than an employee of the other school district. Um, what you can expect from me is honesty, openness. Um, I, I speak my mind. I also speak my truth because I feel that's important to be transparent and open and honest. Um, you can also expect for me to fight for inclus inclusivity for all students. Um, whether they, uh, regardless of their uh, gender, their race, their religion, um, LGBTQ, um, I am interested in making sure that all students feel welcome and safe. Mr. Sate. Yeah, I, I originally got interested in this. Um, I was at a meeting where the then president of the, the board was speaking and ta talking about all the great things that were happening at West Chicago Community High School. And I had never pictured myself in that role uh, until then. And uh, it, it's turned out to be just a wonderful experience. And I, I, I really enjoy uh, bringing my knowledge and experience uh, to bear uh, on the board, being able to ask those questions, be able to look at things from several different directions and, and come to good conclusions by working with the other board members. And I think that's so important looking at one of the qualities is you have to be able to work with other individuals. There's, there's not, uh, you know, it's not just a one person show, it's, it's all seven members working together. Uh, my personal qualities, uh, I, I, I do try to listen. <laughs> I try to listen to a lot of different viewpoints. I think that's uh, one of the things that you have to do. Uh, like Rich, you do have to ask the hard questions. And I think you learn that with experience. Uh, so that would be where I would start with that. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Zuniga. So I'm sorry I missed your first name. I think it was Luna. So I was the second part of your name. So thank you, Luna. Awesome question. Um, so what motivated me? Um, so it's just the community has given me so much. And I forgot to mention, I was a former ESL student. I went through through that. And so again, just great educators and a great community that helped build me and, and shape me into the person I am today. So I just want to give back, um, give back, and again, help all the students succeed, you know, because I feel you're so much more nowadays, technology, resources that can be incorporated to help, you know, all the students succeed. Um, and again, just, you know, serving the, the, the community a little bit more in terms of connecting that, that gap there with the, the inclusivity, the diversity. Um, and so the other thing, what can you expect from me as a board member, um, just honesty, transparency, and again, I am a member of the community. So you'll see me out in, in the grocery store. You'll see me at the soccer games, at the events, and just 
you know, a friendly face you can go up to and say, hi, you know, how's it going? And I would love to fill you in on what's going on, you know, given the chance to be on the board. Thank you. Ms. Freeman. Okay. I have always been involved in some degree in advocacy for children, um, both children with special needs and those kids who were not the super achievers or the athletes or the ones, kids who fall through the cracks are the kids who I have always focused on and will continue to do so. I was asked to join the school board when my daughter was freshman because I had knowledge of special ed and she felt that that would be an attribute that would bring something to the table. But I also come from a financial background. I've worked in banking for 35 years and I have held many leadership roles in my job and in other areas in my lifetime. And what I will bring to the board is continuing to advocate for all kids and continuing to appreciate the work that teachers and staff do and being open, honest, and pretty direct. I say exactly what I think and speak up and have no problem challenging when I think somebody is not, not being forthright. I also like to make decisions and move forward and not spend a lot of time dallying around. Thank you. Ms. Munoz. Thanks again for that question. Um, what motivated me to run for um, the Board of Education is to represent my community. Um, I definitely want to be a strong voice. Um, I definitely thought it was a great time to get involved since we face so many different challenges um, currently. And one of the things that you can expect from me is hard work. I have a very strong work ethic. Um, I want to push for collaboration, transparency, and equity. And um, more than anything, I definitely want to go beyond our doors and connect with students and families and get to know what they would like to see um, happen in their school. Because I think they're the most, uh, we're, in, we're in the service industry and we service parents and um, students in our community. Thank you. We will now move on to question three. And Mr. Orlick, you will begin that question. Hi, my name is Gabriel Lampiris. Um, I am the varsity captain for the tennis team, and I've also been a part of a lot of clubs at uh, WeGo. Uh, my question for you guys is, what kind of experience do you have in which sets you apart from other candidates? Um, the first person to respond is going to be Mr. Orlick. Um, <clears throat> I've mentioned already that I have a, a background as a teacher um, and as a librarian as well. Um, a lot of what I've done, um, one of the things that stood out was the mention of uh, extracurricular activities that you've been involved with. Um, uh, I've been a music teacher as well as a librarian, so I've worked a lot with extracurricular activities. Um, I understand some of the needs that kids have in terms of having activities that fit with their interest and ability levels. Um, I understand how education works because it's been, it's, you know, it's what I studied in college, but it's also what I've been doing with my life for these many years. So um, I think that's, that's my greatest strength is just my background knowledge of how the educational system works. Some of the challenges we face, um, not just as teachers, but um, the challenges that administrators face, the challenges that students face, the challenges that parents face, and the challenges that the community itself faces. Oftentimes, those are different challenges. And so what I bring is the ability to discern that. Mr. Sake, you have one minute. Uh, my deep understanding of uh, school finance would probably be the one thing that is uh, more unique. I think we're all board members have a, uh, a fair understanding of the finances. Uh, the depth I've had is, uh, is probably much deeper than that. Uh, I, I think marrying all the different qualities together uh, of, of finance, of business, of technology, uh, all come together. Uh, one of the things that I, that I also uh, bring is I, I've worked extensively with legislators. And I think one of the things that we have to do as a board 
is to be more involved in advocating for students uh, outside the board. Uh, we need to do it with the legislators uh, where we're seeing a lot of different uh, things come up recently uh, where they're not necessarily asking for the opinions uh, of school boards and, and, and educators. Uh, so we need to move forward with, uh, with impressing upon our legislators uh, to make sure that they listen and hear our concerns. Thanks. This is Zuniga. So Gabriel, thank you for the question. Um, so again, as I mentioned, you know, as a former member that of in the community that grew up in the community, again, a former ESL student, I walked the same hallways that you, you walked. I, I took the same classes that you took. So again, I have similar experiences. And much like you, I also try to get involved with, with my time at the high school. I was, uh, I was on the soccer team. I, was, uh, I, was, uh, I took French all four years. I was in National Art Society. Um, and so just that as well, again, just having the student perspective and now again, as an educator, I feel like um, I can bring that both of those experiences. And again, as we mentioned, being on the board, is it's a team effort. Um, and so just again, having that former student experience and now current educator experience, I guess, again, just brings two extra hats on the table that, you know, can help, you know, just achieve that, that, um, and just help all, all students succeed and again, try and bridge the community a little bit more. So, thank you. Mrs. Duran. Uh, I bring a myriad of experience to the table um, from teaching English as a second language and having a background in working with different cultures and different children with different um, languages to raising children who were very different, um, one with significant special needs and having to learn how to advocate for those children and to um, just being involved with kids as a whole and really enjoying them and knowing how to listen to them along with working in a business community where I had to be a leader and be able to collaborate bring teams together, um, set people on task and make sure the projects got accomplished. And being able to work under fire uh, gives me some skill sets that are a little bit different. Thank you. Thank you. Next person is Ms. Munoz. Thank you for that question, Gabriel. So as I mentioned before, I've worked with for both school districts and I think I definitely did become an advocate um, just out of my willingness to work and collaborate with students and families and listen to the needs and the questions that they were looking to um, be supported with and answering. So uh, again, I'm just very willing to help and support and really listen. And one of the things that I um, am able to do is develop that connection with um, with what needs to get done. And I'm definitely the type of person that rolls up her sleeves and you know gets gets going. Um, so that's one of the I think my biggest assets. And again, I have really great communication skills and. Um, definitely uh, looking to support. Lastly, Mr. Nagel. Sorry, I have trouble with my phone. Um, I think the biggest experience I would be able to show is just the time I've spent on the board uh, I've seen things that work. I've seen things that doesn't work. Um, I'm able to, my, my engineering background, I'm able to analyze and question. But I think the other thing that my experience has, has uh, shown me is that although we all agree that math and science are important, there are other aspects of schooling that are important. One of my sons uh, was uh, in music and that's probably what got him through school. One of my other sons uh, was big in the language area. I'm very supportive of some of the non-traditional curriculum, uh, the arts, the music, drama, language. Uh, I feel that that's every bit as important as some of the things that uh, we get tested on by the state uh, to, to, to be good at. Uh, part of our mission 
of learning, living, and leadership involves more than just math and science. Thank you. Thank you for all your responses. We will now move on to question four. And just a heads up, we have about nine questions prepared. Hello, my name is Charles May. I am a four-year cross-country and track athlete here at the high school. And my question is, how will you ensure the school is safe as students return this year and for next year? And should schools address the issue of gaps in learning due to the pandemic? We'll start with Mr. Sake. Thanks for that. Uh, how, how we're going to keep the school safe, and that's going, that is our, our foremost concern, uh, quite honestly. Uh, that is something that we want to abide by all of the, uh, all the requirements of the CDC, uh, uh, the, local, the Illinois Health uh, Department, and uh, Page County Health Department in moving forward. Obviously, uh, it, it's something that uh, it, it impacts us all. It's, it's great that now that our educator or all our staff has had the opportunity uh, to receive a vaccination, which should help tremendously in that realm, uh, but we're still going to have to monitor it. Uh, as, as far, and what was the second part of that question again, please? Uh, should schools address the issue and learning gaps due to the pandemic? Yeah, that's, that is going to be our, one of our biggest challenges moving forward, and it's not something that's going to uh, resolve itself in, in a day, a week, a month, or even a year. It's going to be a long-term uh, it's going to be long-term work, and I have faith in our administration and our faculty uh, to be able to uh, bring uh, bring their talents to bear and uh, very creatively uh, come up with ideas on how we can uh, how we can address both the uh, academic and social emotional issues. This is Zuniga. Yeah, so uh, great question, great question, Charles. Um, so kind of going off because like Mr. Seku was saying, um, yeah, so we got, you know, buying by those regulations. Um, and again, it's just been really awesome, you know, as, as, an, as educators, you know, that they've been given the opportunity to get that vaccination. I know that again, they're, they're pushing for the four day plan. And again, it's, I, I think again, it's, it's super awesome to have students come back to school because again, there's as you, were, you mentioned, the, the gap, you know, the gap that's caused from online learning, it's good to have students back. Um, but again, I mean, it's going to be an overall team effort. I know, uh, obviously, the, the masks are going to be help, are going to be super helpful, abiding by the, you know, the, the social distance. But again, the big thing is just, you know, following the, the regulations and stuff. Um, and the other, other part were the gaps. Yeah, so again, same thing. That's a tough one. Um, but, you know, again, overall team effort, you know, from, from administrative to school board, teachers, and again, trying to come up with, again, creative ways, you know, to help with credit recovery, you know, with, with summer school and, and try and, you know, get those, those credits back to prepare for, you know, the following year. This is very much, you next. Um, as far as bringing the school students back safely, I think we rely on the judgment of our administrative staff and our teacher with the input of our teachers. Um, we get so many directions from different areas of the government, the CDC, as Mr. Sykes said, it's very difficult, but I, I feel very confident in the recommendations and of the people who are actually on the ground in the school and trying their best to bring the students back. So. We've got guidelines. I trust them to do the job and to give us the best recommendations to keep everyone safe. As far as addressing the gap, it's going to be a huge, it's going to be many years before everybody recuperates. And I think, fortunately, we're all going to have to modify and adjust. And we've got some phenomenal teaching staff there and administration to help us do that. So we just have to be willing to do whatever it takes to help our kids. Thank you. Ms. Munoz. Thank you for that question. So I think that in order to implement the safety measures, we need to lean obviously on the governing bodies 
as was previously stated from the CDC in order to ensure that we are staying within those that guidance and parameters. And then at the building level, obviously to lean on our team so that we are all moving um, in the right direction and ensuring social distancing for the kids and also mask wearing and everything and anything to keep them safe within those guidelines. As um, far as the gaps, I think we need to kind of start to at attendance, just because uh, we need to understand why so many um, children maybe weren't able to log on, maybe weren't able to participate, maybe weren't looking or motivated to engage in a school day um, before because of social, um, you know, emotional needs or anything and everything from technology um, or um, lack of support in order to log on or be present. So I think that's the place to start. Um, and I do think it is gonna take a lot of work. Mr. Nagel. Yes, good question. Um, as far as ensuring safety, you've, you've heard from a couple of people about how important it is that we follow the guidelines, which sometimes change on a daily basis. Uh, we're building walls, we're putting in new furniture so we can safely uh, distance uh, people as they come back. Um, but I think one of the things that really needs to be kept in mind is that the administration is going to establish their rules for being back in school. And we're also going to require uh, and expect the students to be able to follow those rules because a lot of what's going to happen really is going to be dependent on the number of students that are back and how, how well they are following the guidelines that the school is, is giving them. Um, as far as filling in the gaps, uh, my first priority is getting students back in school. And then my second priority, and we've had some discussions already about that, is, is recovery. Uh, how we're going to recover time, how we're going to recover curriculum. Um, and, and that is going to take a while. Um, my, my other concern is that the um, elementary school students are missing the same kinds of things that we are. And we have to recover them as they uh, acclimate back into our school. Thank you. Mr. Orlich. Uh, great question. Um, <clears throat> so as far as um, getting kids safely back into the schools, um, everything that's been said, obviously um, we need to take guidance from CDC, ISBE, um, and and the experts who are going to to guide us to make decisions that are going to be uh, the safest for students and staff. Um, uh, having said that, I think if, from my experience, what I've seen, students are better with masks than most adults I know. <laughs> um, the kids I've worked with at elementary, middle, and high school level during the past year have all been really great about just adapting. Kids adapt much easier, I think, than adults. Um, in terms of the gap, um, this is a nationwide, worldwide issue. Um, which is not to lessen the importance of bridging the gap. Yes, we're going to work harder. We're going to do everything we can to get the kids to where they need to be. But we have to bear in mind that this is something that is uh, going to be an issue everywhere and that we're certainly not alone in this struggle. Thank you. We will now move on to question five. Hello, my name is Ruby Lebo. Um, I am the president of the HOSA and Compass Club, and I'm also captain for girls soccer. Here we go. So as we were preparing for this um, in our government classes, the topic of mental health um, frequently came up. So in response to student concern, um, as well as the continuous rise in um, mental health issues, especially in light of a pandemic, um, what could be done in the school to better address the issue of mental health um, and what could be done to support the growing number of students in need? Unfortunately, the fire alarm just went off in the school, so we are going to take another computer and go outside. Can you just hold on one minute? <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So we're 
um, sheltering. <laughs> uh, so there's sirens in the back, but we still wanted to get the questions out there. Sorry, the, the fire truck's right by us. It's moving away. Okay, <laughs> so um, just to reiterate, my question was kind of in response to student concern about mental health. Um, so I would love to hear from you guys, what sort of things would you like to implement in this school or what sort of um, ways should we, um, uh, ways should we help students um, know that they have support for those sorts of things? So um, yes, basically, in what ways can we support students in mental health issues? Um, yes, Mr. Zanega, if you would please begin. Absolutely, Ruby. Thank you for the question, and thanks, guys, for you know, for continuing to do this, even though the you know the fire trucks are there. So thank you. Um, so yeah, so I know that I believe the high school has an awesome resource there where it helps students. Um, I believe I don't remember the, the name of the top of my head, but, but there's resources there. I think you know, just maybe allocating more funds there to provide more support staff, because um, as you're saying, it's becoming such a concern before and before the pandemic, and now the pandemic, I feel it just kind of like made it like. I don't even know, like four or five times worse in terms of that. Um, and uh, and so along with that and incorporating some more SEL activities um, in the classrooms um, and, you know, offering a little bit more more programs that, that do more asset-based teaching methods um, where like the, the content allows that as well as, you know, some, some culturally inclusive or culturally relevant um, classes that have, that allows, allows for that. Um, but yeah, so again, just, providing more, more of those resources, you know, for, for staff and, and more programs to help that. Thank you. Okay, um, Mrs. Zeramis, you're next. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I am very, very concerned about what is going on with the kids through this and what's going to happen when they come back. And I think we're just going to have to be incredibly diligent in providing resources, making actively reaching out to families, to our students, giving them a safe place and ability to talk through whatever they're going through and really, really being having all of our staff cognizant and looking for kids who might fall through the cracks. I don't know that there is an easy answer. There never has been in the past, but I do believe that the pandemic has exacerbated a problem that's already existed and we just have to do better working at it. Thank you. Ms. Munoz. Thank you for that question. I think there needs to be a team specifically organized for for this purpose, given the current situation and circumstances. After that, I think that we need to develop strong partnerships within our communities that allows us for that accessibility to resources and linkage specifically to support mental health um, connections to um, from students and families and also identify partnerships that also help to connect or bridge that lack of, you know, medical coverage or whatever that looks like in order to access these supports and resources. We need to kind of figure out um, how to best support families in acquiring accessibility to those supports. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, kind of catches me a little bit off guard. Um, as far as the needs of students, I'm really not in a position to be able to determine that. That's the kind of thing that a board should rely on the administration and the staff to get some feedback on what are the issues, how do we meet those issues, how do we provide support for, for needs. We do have a couple of programs that we've been talking about for the last couple of years to help some of the SEL situations. Uh, the, the pandemic kind of got in the way of some of the planning that we've been doing, but certainly mental health within the student population is of concern and we need to address those as best we can, but we need to understand what we need to address before we can really set off and start doing anything productive. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Orlick. Yeah, I think it's important to to um, continue SEL um, 
programs and classes as they are, but um, make sure that there's a distinction um, that mental health is sort of above and beyond the reach of SEL to a great degree. Um, we need mental health awareness. Uh, it should be definitely a part of the curriculum if it isn't already in health or SEL classes. Um, students need to be taught empathy as do staff um, and an understanding of what, what encapsules mental health. And then, you know, part of that could be led into using the discussion of the pandemic and its effect on, on mental health as sort of a springboard, but it, it is something that should be continuing long beyond the discussion of the pandemic's effect and continue on to be a regular part of the curriculum. Mr. Sake. Uh, we have uh, excellent resources in place uh, currently, and I think it's going to be based upon uh, them reaching out, uh, certainly, and and I, I, I want to make sure that the, the faculty is, is do some continuing education on, on recognition, uh, working with families and recognition there also. I think sometimes uh, families get left out of, uh, of knowing that there are resources available and how to recognize where, the, where their students are having issues, uh, where it becomes a problem, where we, where we do need to be referred. Uh, if we need to bring in outside help, I, I think it's important to do. I, I know this is, this is a, a nationwide or worldwide struggle uh, that we're dealing with here, an issue that they're dealing with. So uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of resources, a lot of uh, good ideas coming out uh, from several different sources. Um, but I think it's really that, that basic, and then also working with the students themselves and, and knowing each other's and working with each other uh, to know when to ask for help. Thank you. Thanks. We are gonna have one more question and we're gonna combine two questions together. Here they are. Hello, I'm Maxwell Harris. And I'm Emily Yala. Uh, I'm a secretary of the math team, and I just was going to ask, how do you plan to promote student involvement in extracurriculars? And then, yes, I'm captain of the Girls Varsity team, and I'm also president of BPA here, our Business Professionals of America. Um, recently, I was a Spanish um, interpreter for District 33, and so with that, I was wondering, considering that 70% of our student population is Latino, how do you plan to include parents in our school community, and more importantly, in our students' education? Mr. Amos, if you could start, please. That was a two-part question, so it's a bit complicated. Um, answer, I think that's to, I find it very, very important to kids at the school level get involved in as many activities as possible. But as a board, all we can do is sit back and encourage that and support the people who come forward to create those different programs. And I think we need to make those available by collaboration with the feeder districts, especially District 33, um, because we do have a significant number of our students coming from that group. And can you repeat the second part of that question? I kind of had a computer glitch and missed part of it. Okay, apparently. Were you finished? I was asking if you could repeat the second part of the question. Um, they were asking about um, how do you incorporate students and also parents? Okay. I think We Go Together for Kids had a great way of reaching out to the parents, and I think it would be awesome to take some of what they've learned and utilize that. We do have ways of trying to reach out to them, but I think we could do and need to do a better job going forward. Thank you. Ms. Munoz. 
Thank you so much for that question. So first and foremost, as far as involvement in activities, I think that staff needs to be visible to the community. I think that's the best way to kind of be approachable and open to that, uh, having an open door policy. I think that, um, you know, we can model um, that more um, in, in our community, as well as I've been very fortunate to um, be door knocking and um, trying to get my, my voice and my name out there. And that was a really great question, Emily, because we do need to kind of bridge any type of language barrier that could possibly exist in order to have families connect to their district, to the school, to the community, wanting to get involved, wanting to have those conversations, actively volunteer, actively participate in their students' um, you know, uh, educational experience. Um, and definitely um, I've been able to, like I said, connect with um, students and families that really wanna see that happen. And hopefully once we are um, a more diverse group, we can have that connectivity and, and start to have those meaningful conversations. Thank you. Um, next person, Mr. Nagel. As far as promoting the involvement in extracurricular activities, what I think is part of our recovery needs is to rebuild the momentum that we had with sports and with clubs going pre-pandemic. We had a lot of opportunities for things for students to do, and we need to make sure that all of those get put back in place and maybe some additional things. Um, as far as including parents in school and education, we, we have an open door policy. We're always inviting parents to be involved. I think the most important thing that we could do is for students to actually get their parents involved, have their students promoting the teacher parent conferences, have their students bringing their parents in for, um, sporting events and club events, any any opportunity that the student has, because sometimes parents feel like, well, in high school, students don't really want us involved. But if you tell them you do want them involved, then that's going to go farther than the high school asking the parents to get involved. Thank you. Mr. Orlick. I would love to see, um, I would love to see a council, if you will, an organization that includes student leaders, teacher leaders, parent-teacher organization leaders, uh, administrators, and school board members working together, um, inviting their, um, their cohorts. You know, I, I would invite other community members to be a part of events. Um, students would invite other students parents who are already involved would invite other parents and so on. Um, I think creating a community of leadership that includes all of us, not making all the groundbreaking decisions, but creating the atmosphere and the welcoming community is so important. It's got to come from all of us um, that parents need to be involved and that students need to, you know, actively participate in their education. Um, if it doesn't, it's it, that message isn't universal enough. Mr. Faith. When uh, we had to uh, go remote learning, one of the things I was concerned with was to continue uh, activities to the extent possible. So I think it's such an important aspect of, of student life and remaining, keeping that connection uh, to the other students and, and to the faculty for that matter. Uh, and I, we just have to continue that. Uh, as far as in parent involvement, several years ago, we did a parent academy that uh, was primarily uh, targeted toward uh, the Hispanic community, uh, where there may have been uh, issues where we uh, wanted them to be able to advocate for their students. And it, it didn't necessarily, it, I think it went very well, but it didn't result in a lot of change. And I would like to see us bring that back again and take another shot at it and, and hopefully uh, reinvigorate that and, and get them more involved. I think one of the problems was uh, once they went through the program, keeping them involved was, was always a struggle. So I think we need to work in that area. Lastly, Mr. Zuniga. So Max and Emily, awesome question. 
Um, so in terms of extracurriculum, I think it comes as as Penny says, it's a community effort. You know, if the usually it's the teacher that is the, the coach. You know, seeing the coach out and about, you know, seeing what they're doing, it's just easier. You know, for a student to go up to the teacher and then they feel more con inclined to do that extra curricular activity. Likewise, I know like I keep up with the social media pages, like the soccer page, they do a wonderful like job of spotlighting practices. I'm talking about. Uh, alumni that graduated, what they're going to do after. So again, it's just like a whole community effort. And uh, Emily, so to answer your question, again, I just want to thank you though for for translating. I myself was doing the same thing yesterday. I did parent-teacher conferences, and then I was helping out with with translation for Spanish-speaking uh, parents. Um, so again, it's just a team effort, a community effort. Um, you know, everyone kind of being involved. And like you said, it, like uh, the high school is a very large Hispanic population, um, and it's just being, you know, consistent. And like Mr. Saki said, those programs are wonderful, but it's just following through with them because it's just, you know, sometimes they work in the at night, you know, so just offering programs where it's just like, it's inclusive for everyone and open to everyone as well. So. Thank you. That now wraps up our question portion of this evening, and we will now move on to our closing statement. You will each have one minute, and we will begin with Mr. Saki. Sorry, I lost my mute button there for a second. Uh, I, I hope you agree that the progress made as a district over the past several years has been exceptional and deserving of recognition. Uh, the challenges we face as a result of the pandemic are daunting, and there's never been a more important time than now uh, for experienced leadership on the board. I'm proud to have earned the endorsements of the Daily Herald, United Hellenic Voters of America, and Safe Suburbs USA, and I hope I've earned your support and vote also. For more information, please go to www.sake.org or like my Gary Sake for District 94 Board of Education Facebook page. Thank you once again to the league and especially the WCCHS American Government students for hosting us here today. Please vote on April 6th. My name is first on the ballot. Thank you. This is Zuniga. So again, thank you so much for, you know, for welcoming us in. Uh, awesome questions. And again, I'm just, just, just proud that, you know, that, that you guys are doing this. This is awesome, a great way to get back to the community and learn more about, you know, who's running for board and who's currently on there. Um, so again, my name is Giovanni Zuniga, running for District 94 School Board. Um, I hope I, um, I earned your, your trust and in, in your vote. And again, a lifelong community member. I'm a current teacher, and I hope to, again, bring the experience as a former student and a current teacher to the board and again a community effort to our team effort to help the students and the community um, you know achieve their goals um, and I am last on the ballot as my last thing was Z so vote for me I am last on the ballot thank you so much Mrs. Dreaming uh, thank you again for inviting us in here as I mentioned in my opening statement I'm past passionate about education and mainly about this high school. I wouldn't have spent all this time and wished to go on it for four more years without it. I'm always amazed at the number of people who don't take the time to vote for the school board. And that tells me that they're not interested in the students that go there who are our future. I've always been involved, always will be involved because the students, the teachers, the administration of the school mean everything to me. The students are our future and I hope to be there as the doors open again and we can bring us out to whatever comes next. Thank you. Ms. Munoz. Thanks again, everyone, for hosting us today. It was a great opportunity. I really appreciate your um, thoughtful questions. Um, I am feel, feel very fortunate to be here. I'm looking to um, support my community to get more involved, to be the voice reflective of the diversity here in West Chicago, um, to build on my connections within the community, um, specifically to students and families. I am an active parent in our district, and I'm looking to propel our district to new heights. Please go to my Facebook page, um, Munoz for G94 um, at, on Facebook, and vote for me on April 6th. Thank you so much for your time today. It's, it's been a great experience. Mr. Nagel. Lost my mute button. Um, these were very well thought out, good questions, very relevant to the times. And frankly, I would have expected nothing less from our students. 
Uh, students always make me proud at how they represent our school and our community. And I would be honored to continue my work on your behalf. I hope you'll support me. Thank you. Mr. Orlick. Um, the students today are so well-spoken, um, as is <laughs> Mr. Zuniga, <laughs> our alumnus. Um, I am very proud to um, be in the position that I am to be considered to be a part of this community. I am the kind of board member who will come to basketball games, who will come to theater, who will come to the choir concerts and band concerts and support the work of the kids, because that's what it is really all about. Make sure you vote on April 6th. Uh, my initials are DO, and I will do everything that I can for the stakeholders of District 94. Thank you. Thank you for all your particip participation in our candidate forum. To those that are watching, we hope you mark your calendars to vote on and before Tuesday, April 6th, and the consolidation consolidated election. <laughs> Remember that democracy is not a spectator sport. Thank you and have a good day.